Hi, I'm pro saxophonist Jamie Anderson. You're watching Get Your Sax Together, <laughs> a sax up your Sunday every week with technique and improvising tips, player profiles, and of course, my famous breakdowns of the world's best loved sax lines. In today's free online sax lesson, you'll be learning how to play a real dirty blues song, and that's Night Train by Jimmy Forrest. If you love dirty blues saxophone, you're gonna love this week's breakdown. Night Train Blues was a big hit for tenor saxophonist Jimmy Forrest in 1951, but the composition has had an interesting evolution. The first part of the song was originally recorded by Duke Ellington's sideman Johnny Hodges in 1940 under the title That's the Blues Old Man. And the second section of the song was first recorded by Ellington himself in 1946 under the title Happy Go Lucky Local as part of his Deep South Suite. Jimmy Forrest was in Ellington's band at the time, so obviously that's where he got the melody from. Forrest then went on to record his much slower version called Night Drain for the first time in 1951. Using the same bass ostinato riff as Jimmy Forrest, but in A instead of A flat, Earl Bostick recorded a more up-tempo version in 1952, and James Brown did his well-known name-checking version in 1961. However, probably the best-known version of all, this time in B-flat, is by the fictitious 50s dance band Marvin Berry and the Starlighters performing at the Enchantment Under the Sea dance in the 1985 movie Back to the Future. Right enough, it seems historically feasible that a dance band in 1955 would be playing an R&B hit from 1951 or two. I couldn't find out who played sax on the Back to the Future version, but if you know, let me know in the comments. This song has always had a special part in my heart as me and my mate Drew Baker used to play it together in pub gigs in Falkirk in Scotland when I was about 15 or 16. Shout out to Drew Baker. He was older than me and I used to really look up to him, but I dread to think what we both sounded like back then. Just before we dive into the first phrase, remember to go down into the description for this video and click the link to get your free PDF sheet music for Night Train. It's written out for alto and tenor sax with all the phrase numbers marked in. Also keep watching to the end because after I've played the whole thing, I'll let the backing track run for you to play along with. If you're a beginner on saxophone, this is gonna be a better week for you than last week. <laughs> Night Train is a 12 bar blues in concert A flat, which is a blues in B flat for tenor and a blues in F for alto. There's six phrases to learn in total. And once we've learned these phrases, I'll show you how to put them together into the arrangement. Here's the breakdown of phrase one. Just before we move on to the second phrase, I wanted to quickly mention my free Saxophone Success Masterclass. This is my gift to you guys, and it's a one hour video lesson for saxophonists of any standard, with loads of in-depth teaching to help you transform your tone, improve your timing, design a structured practice routine so you don't waste your time, and loads of other pro tips and tricks. The link is in the description, or you can visit www.getyoursaxtogether.com forward slash masterclass. Okay, without further ado, let's look at phrase two now. This is a very short phrase, which is in the Earl Bostic version, but not the Back to the Future version. Just before we learn phrase three, here's the question of the week. What's your favorite version of Night Train? Let me know in the comments. I actually love the happy-go-lucky Ellington version but Back to the Future is one of my favorite movies of all time. So that version will always have a nostalgic place in my heart. <laughs> Just realized I didn't even mention this version. Oops, I do love it though. Moving swiftly on then, here's phrase three. It's only the first two notes that are different from phrase one. One of the most notable features of this opening chorus is the long glissandos that Jimmy Forrest uses. If you want to learn how to do that, go to the card linked above now. In this case, I'm just putting all my fingers down without paying much attention to what scale it is and tapering off my embouchure and breath. If you're 
If you get the free PDF from the description, you'll see that you would now play phrase two again, followed by phrase three. That completes the first blues chorus. If you want to find out more about the 12 bar blues, go to the card linked above now, which is my epic blues sax special. Phrase four is played three times in a row to make up the second chorus of this 12 bar blues. I'm sure that Jimmy Forrest chose the unusual key of A flat major just so that he could bark those low B flats out in tenor. I mean, come on, loud low B flats and tenor. Is there a more satisfying sound in the world? <laughs> Sadly, you'll have to settle for a normal F on alto as it goes too low for that instrument. <laughs> Although you learn them separately, phrases five and six are really one four bar phrase, which is what we call a send off. A send off is a four bar phrase at the start of a chorus, which acts as a springboard into the solo section. Often a send off will have stop time. On this occasion, Jimmy Forrest doesn't actually spring into a solo, but restates the melody. Here's the first half of that send off, which is phrase five. Jimmy Forrest adds a bit of a growly tone to this send off. If you want to learn how to growl and sax, go to the card linked above now. In this case, he's using a humming throat growl, but it's not that strong, so don't overdo it. Here's phrase six now, the second half of the send off. We've now got all the phrases covered, so let's have a quick look at the structure of the song and how we piece together the sections we've just learned. The melody is divided into three separate 12 bar choruses. The first chorus is phrase one, phrase two, phrase three, phrase two, and phrase three. The second chorus, the rhythmic riffy chorus, is simply phrase four played three times. And the final chorus has the send off, which is phrase five, then phrase six, followed by phrase four played twice. While I was producing this lesson, I made an informal behind the scenes blog. So you can see what my creation process is from start to finish. If you're interested, or if you just wanna to get to know me a bit better, go to the card linked above now to watch it. I've put together a backing track for this one, and after I've played it through, the backing track runs for you to play along with. It's deliberately dirty, so don't worry, there's nothing wrong with your stereo. I might have over filthed it a tad, but never mind. Remember to get your free PDF from the description to follow along with each phrase as I play it. And as always, be sure to listen to the original recording and try and mimic the phrasing, groove, and sound. The intro is two bars, and when it's all put together, it should sound something like this. Here we go.
hope you enjoyed this week's lesson. Sometimes you just can't beat a dirty slow blues. In fact, when I bought Night Train on iTunes, it was featured on a compilation called Essential Burlesque. So that tells you all you need to know about how filthy this song is. <laughs> if you want to learn some more in-depth sax stuff, go to www.getyoursaxtogether.com forward slash masterclass and get your free one hour lesson with me. And as always, you can support me by giving this video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, click the bell icon to be notified when I upload new content and check out my Insta and Facebook pages. I genuinely appreciate you watching the channel and supporting me, so thank you. Next Sunday, you'll be learning the basics of playing altissimo notes on sax, but until then, practice smart and have an awesome week. Laters. Without paying attention, oh, for Ah, uh, let's try that again, shall we? That was rubbish.